When we start to romanticize our own lives, everything becomes special. Our morning coffee becomes special. Our morning stretch has something ritualistic to it. The every day becomes at the forefront of what we're doing. We start becoming slower naturally. Hello there. How are you doing today? I don't know about you, but I oftentimes get something invited into my feed which is basically vlogs about women sharing a day in their lives. And sometimes it is a day in my life as a psychologist, a day in my life as a lawyer, a day in my life as a <laughs> fill in the blank, but sometimes it is just sharing a day in my life. And I think this is so beautiful. It's very ordinary, mundane things, activities, like starting the day with a coffee or with a tea and with stretching and reading and journaling and all of those things. But they're prepared in such a visually aesthetic way that I like to call it romanticizing one's life. And I think we can learn so much from this approach because romanticizing one's life puts the mundane and makes it special, which is beneficial for our mental health, our mental well-being. We are getting our priorities straight because we are prioritizing self-care. We gain appreciation for the mundane things in life. We turn them basically ritualistic. So. So I want to talk about this a little bit. I want to talk about the inspiration that we can get from watching those videos and applying this approach into our own lives. Because as I said, you will gain so much from it. So let's get right into it. When we start to romanticize our own lives, everything becomes special. Our morning coffee becomes special. Our morning stretch has something ritualistic to it. The every day becomes at the forefront of what we're doing. We start becoming slower naturally. We start to develop an appreciation for the super ordinary things in our lives. When we start to prioritize, for example, our morning routine, our morning shower, we will touch every part of our body and it's gonna feel amazing. And this process of slowing down the things is incredibly helpful. It is a possible approach to mindfulness. It is a possible way to just become more aware of the things that we're doing. And also we become quite rebellious when we are getting that appreciation for the everyday things because we start to prioritize ourselves instead of prioritizing what society wants from us. Society may want us to run and run and run and do and do and do, but when we start romanticizing our own life, we're not up for it because it's just not aesthetic. No, that's a little joke. Uh, it's not just because it's not aesthetic to rush through it, but it's also not a priority anymore. So you could say we become a cultural critique because our own personal fulfillment this introspection, this looking into ourselves, this experiencing and being mindful of the things that we experience forces us to slow down, forces us to go out of that wheel, that hamster wheel of doing and doing and doing. So do it, try it out, slow it down, see how you're feeling. It can also serve as a creativity boost. Creativity is not doing all the time, listening all the time, but creativity is allowing space, allowing space, allowing the emptiness to fuel it. And creativity, I actually have a book about it that I think is super beautiful. I found it. So creativity is a lot of looking around the world looking around ourselves, looking within ourselves. When it's autumn, for example, I think autumn is the best example actually because everything becomes really colorful. Everything becomes super colorful and shapes 
change and it's just a very aesthetic season. It's like my favorite season because it's so beautiful. And in this season, you can really watch, you can really observe things and observe the way that things change. And in every artist's book that I ever read, it says that art and drawing has a lot to do with proper watching, with proper seeing. And you won't see things when you're just taking a glimpse. And when you are romanticizing your life, what you're doing is you're basically looking at things a lot. Because you might spend one or two hours drinking your first coffee in the morning if you drink coffee. You spend a lot of time just with your coffee. You taste differently because you are so aware, because you're so slow, because you're so mindful. And I'll admit that watching those romanticizing your life videos or a day in my life, watching those videos, I'm really reminded on the things that are so beautiful. And those things are not the running and hustling and bustling, but those things are capturing the moment, embracing the moment, falling in love with the moment, falling in love with what you are doing in this moment, falling in love with seeing, with tasting with feeling, with appreciating things. And I feel deeply, deeply inspired and I'm very grateful for all of the people who ever made a Day In My Life video because they really bring us back. They really show us what's important, which is, as I said, being aware and being mindful. And I can imagine that it will be difficult for a lot of people. It certainly would be very, very challenging, uh, if not impossible for me at this current state, to slow down a full day and to romanticize a full day in my life. But how about dedicating just a little bit of time every day in the morning, in the afternoon and or in the evening to slow it down, to see how you can romanticize your own life. I'll certainly do that. I, I'm going to commit to romanticize my mornings and my evenings, to slow down the process in this time, to not become so fast and so unaware of the things. And I hope that maybe some people are gonna join me. Maybe some people want to romanticize a part of their daily lives as well. I think it is so beneficial in so many ways. I will repeat them. You'll get a super creativity boost because you're just very aware and you're seeing properly, you're smelling properly. You can tell great stories with the most mundane things. You gain appreciation for the things that you see, for the things that you do, for the things that you taste. You will get that experiential richness from daily activities, nothing special. Rather, you make it special. You create a ritual out of things that otherwise you just do, but you do them with the utmost awareness. You emphasize on self-care. You let go of societal expectations for you to hustle and grind, and you'll focus on yourself, what's important to you, what you appreciate, what you can make special. You become a rebel by basically just doing things your way, experiencing things your way. And you slow down. It's the best, it's the easiest way of mindfulness. It's mindfulness in action. So I hope you'll try it. I hope you'll try romanticizing a part in your daily life. I'll certainly do. And I think I very much need it. I think a lot of people in your society very much need it. So thanks for everybody who did a day in their lives. I will continue watching those videos because they just give so much peace and so much tranquility and so much inspiration. So I wish you a wonderful day, wonderful evening, wonderful night, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.